So today's theme is couple. There's a couple ways I could take this, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, the first on duet gaming, i.e. one GM, one player, which is something that I think can be done, but it's going to be one of those where you have to be very, very specific, and you're going to be um, having to do a whole lot more legwork than you would with a full-on group. I'm not saying that duet gaming is not is impossible, and I think there's a handful of games that I'd say it works better for, but if you're trying to do duets with, say, D&D, um, you're going to be in for a much tougher time than you would for lighter games. Do I think it could work with something like Powered by the Apocalypse? Eh, maybe. I do think that going with more narrativist would work, but the thing is, it's going to be a lot more dependent on interplay between the one GM and the one player. That's why I wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people, because it does require a much different approach than, uh, than if you were just using a traditional um, table size. Now, the other couple thing that I want to talk about is, well, actual couples showing up at a given table. Um, this is one of those things that I'm always kind of iffy about. Not that I don't have anything against um couples decide deciding to join in the hobby together but more often than not in my experience and i do want to make clear this is just my own perspective on the matter you have a lot of cases where one person is far more invested than the other and the latter person is just is just there for the sake of it um and i don't particularly care for that on my table simply because of the fact that you've got one person who's doing all the work and one person who's very clearly phoning it in. And if one person starts phoning it in, that's going to result in a domino effect. Obviously, there are cases where both or both couples, both people in the couple are invested. But I find that that's more rare than not. More often than not, you've got the case of somebody's significant other getting dragged to the table and... um me having to deal with the intermediary within it. Furthermore, there's the um, there's the temptation to do a whole lot of softballing when it comes to those situations. And unfortunately, I am not the GM who's going to do softballing. I'm not saying that I'm a hard-ass GM. I'm not saying that I'm the evil GM. And I'm sure as hell I'm not trying to aim to be that guy. But I am not going to sugarcoat the experience just for the sake of one individual person, or even one individual person's significant other. That's just not how I operate. That's why I'm all, when it comes to that, I'm always very selective about who comes to the table. Not in a um, purity test kind of way, but more of a matter of, look, here's what I've got planned, here's what I expect from the players... If that's not up to your speed, then we'll, then we'll part on good terms and that'll be that. But don't come in and then ex and expect me to change a bunch of stuff just to please you. That's not how this works. And if I'm going to do that, I expect payment in, in advance. In cash. I don't go that far all that often, but the point is is that I have to, I have to run things in a specific way that is expected of me. And... I can't really change that just for the just for the sake of playing favorites, mostly because I don't. I personally go with the policy of I hate everyone equally, or as a GM, it's my job to make everyone's life um, equally stressful. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I don't go out to I don't go out to start a um, start a murder spree with players. It's, I'm not running Tomb of Horrors, but stuff's gonna happen, and the dice gods show no mercy. Amen.